self-interest in that respect because if my religion is not better than yours why should you give me the money <laughs> why should you be uh, giving me the power and that was the problem and uh, 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 but then you uh, uh, I would venture to say that uh, anybody any, any prophet that has started a, a religious order you know be it Moses or, or Jesus or uh, Buddha or uh, many pieces they experience this oneness our brain has been designed to experience the oneness through meditation and the Vedic races are the first one to do that at the beginning they, they were not quite sure but at the end of Ved, the Vedanta that means everything is coming from one single source but the problem happened that time is that uh, uh, they realized that the source is abstract you know our, our existence really at the, at the bedrock of reality is totally abstract hard to hard to really uh, imagine that and so they thought that if people cannot relate to abstract ab abstractness they should be allowed to choose whatever icon they can relate to yeah. but don't forget that it's only an icon behind it there is only one entity Correct. and so in, in that sense Vedas are the first scripture that pro, uh, uh, a monotheistic scripture that everything comes from one single source and uh, they, they asked me in the West, you know, why do you have so many gods and goddesses in India? In, in India? And I tell them that uh, people who worship Kali, uh, they don't fight with uh, <laughs> people who worship Durga or Ganesh or any, any other deity uh, because they realize that it's all, uh, all different manifestations of the same entity. And, uh, uh, you know, like the Hindus fighting Muslims or Muslim fighting Hindus, that, that uh, that doesn't happen with the uh, of these different deities that are uh, being worshipped by people. Um, so, um, so what I was getting at is that uh, uh, the higher power, which is at the basis, which has been experienced by uh, most of the uh, uh, people who started a spiritual order, uh, is something now we can see uh, people through meditation uh, by brain mapping that actually the, the, the description they're giving of that oneness is so similar even Nehru who proclaimed to be an agnostic he said that uh, through meditation when people talk about oneness they describe in such vivid language exactly same uh, from different religion different people uh, be it a Hindu yogi or Muslim Sufi or a Christian, uh, uh, you know, uh, like Priest. Uh, uh, Christian, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the mystics okay. uh, like uh, Eckhart, Meister Eckhart, and uh, uh, and Jewish Kabbalist, you know, they all describe the this oneness in a s exactly similar term that you have melted away the distance that I am dif uh, different that I am different from you that's melt away the the fact that i'm different in space that melts away you become you, feel, you get the feeling of oneness and we see br by brain mapping that actually before and after meditation those things are happening the, and uh, so uh, that's why i said it's amazing that our brain developed to experience it first and then we uh, were explaining by logic but that's why you know a lot of people think that science and spirituality are at odds they are too different to be mixed. They are like apples and oranges. And uh, what I have tried to show that really they are two sides of the same coin. If you look at a coin, one side looks so different than the other, but the, the hidden connection yeah, is connecting them coin. together. Yeah. So here, our consciousness is the one through which we experience. Isn't it the same consciousness that we find the logic of science? So why shouldn't it be there a connection between them? So. In fact, the biggest mystery that uh, Einstein first uh, said in, uh, about 50 years ago, that the most incomprehensible thing about God or nature is that it is comprehensible. <laughs> Why is it? Uh, and, and recently, uh, Penrose from Oxford said that uh, it is amazing that human brain has developed uh, in a way that it can grasp, is it designed to grasp how the universe was developed, how the universe is working today, why, you know, uh, why this should be uh, uh, in, in, in such an amazing coincidence. There are a lot of uh, Nobel laureate, Wigner uh, said the same thing, and uh, uh, John Wheeler from Princeton, uh, in, uh, in, 
again said the same thing. In fact, when you really think about it, uh, that uh, you know, we're tiny little human being in this whole vast universe, and yet our little brain can really figure out how big this universe is, how it is working, and interestingly, since the universe came from one single element, the laws of the universe are exactly the same everywhere. And the universe is an con amazingly consistent place, and we, we're not finding that. But the most most puzzling thing is, of course, is you know, why is our consciousness able to grasp how this universe is created and how it is going, uh, how it's working? There are a couple of other uh, puzzling things, like in quantum mechanics, for example, quantum world is not out there somewhere. It's our very underpinning our day-to-day -day world. Our day-to-day -day world, everything is separate, everything is uh, solid. But uh, Einstein showed that even though everything is solid, it's made of energy, one substance of energy. That's different manifestors of energy. So he figured out that, uh, he thought that if everything is made of one substance, why do you have four different force fields, you know, gravity, electromagnetism, two nuclear forces. So that was his, uh, uh, that was his uh, quest that, uh, could it be coming from one single source, and that's what we're finding out now. But the thing is, what I'm saying is that in the quantum world, things are very counterintuitive because everything is all mixed up. One particle can stay anywhere in the world. One particle can take very different paths. It's hard to imagine those things. Yet Schrodinger equation puts in beautifully, and it behaves like a beautiful equation. But uh, but we don't know why Schrodinger function uh, function collapses and gives a reality. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the this counterintuitive quantum coherence that everything is spread out and everything is uh, 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 like a mystical uh, 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 situation uh, that is a big mystery. And the mystery is we know how the universe came about. I mean, uh, how it started, but you don't know who created and for what.